After living and working in London for 17 years, in 1992, artist Deirdre O'Mahony returned to Ireland with her young family to begin a new life and career in the Burren in County Clare. Deirdre's arrival into a new community in County Clare coincided with a tense conflict that was emerging between those for and against developing a site as an interpretive centre for the Burren National Park at Mullochmore. Her work during the following years began to reflect the harsh and contested landscape of the Burren. When Deirdre and I spoke, she began by talking about how the poet and art critic Tom Duddy influenced her at that time. Tom Duddy, for me, I, I completely, he was the first person that I came across who spoke from an Irish context with all that kind of real understanding of the politics of place and how it was playing out. Uh, uh, he, he really um, changed my perception on how the arts were instrumentalized so much in kind of concretizing a certain vision of the West of Ireland that was really problematic and, and, you know, would have led to the kind of tensions that arose um, in, in, you know, at Mullachmore. And, and I, you know, my own position in relation to that landscape really shifted from going there starry eyed and seeing it as a, as a kind of place that I had visited as a child all the time and loved and my mother had loved and I think she'd really, um, uh, uh, she'd really imbued that love in me. Um, and, and, and slowly the scales falling off my eyes and, and, and just coming to understand that it was much more complex than the aesthetic um, perspective of place that I went there with. A period of conflict and protest began in 1992 when the state were taken to court by the Burren Action Group and were eventually forced to halt building works and return the site close to Mullochmore to its original condition in 2000. There's a, there's a lovely quote that I often use from a guy called J.B. Jackson. He's an American writer. And he talks about how you know, you have two perspectives on landscape. You have the social perspective and you have the, um, the aesthetic perspective. And he said, actually, we have to find space to accommodate both within us because we all need the, the comfort of human contact that comes from the social perspective, while also the solitude that comes from the kind of aesthetic experience is equally necessary. Deirdre talks about how paintings that she made in the 1990s embody the complexities of the Boran landscape in this book, published by ACA Public, Between a Rock and a Hard Place. For the series Erratics, made between 1995 and 1996, the shadows of huge boulders in the Burren became her starting point. The light in the Burren, if you get a sunny day, you've seen from the, the stills taken from the Corsi Alien video, the, the light is extraordinary at that time of the year. And so, you know, you had these kind of inky doubles of the erratics elongated that were just black. And, and, and they had such a strong presence. And I just thought that's the perfect metaphor, not only for my own position, but also, you know, I was thinking a lot about belonging and, and the search to belong in a place and never really having achieved that, either in London, where I'd come from, where I'd spent, what, 18 years, 17 or 18 years, and now back here in Ireland. 
So, so that sense of displace, of, you know, kind of being all but not off, never quite belonging was really strong for me. Um, so I thought it was a really good metaphor, but I was also, um, I had proposed that the idea before I'd ever made the works, I proposed it to the Guinness Hop Store because I really wanted them to, to kind of replicate that migratory journey of from the country to the city. Deirdre's other works during this period were also made in direct contact with the Berlin landscape, such as the Traces of Origin series, which was exhibited by the entrance of Aloe Caves in 1993. Her Wrap series was made by wrapping boulders in canvas and marking the surface with grass and mud to create impressions that were later worked on in studio. This is on Title VI from 1996. The painting contains barren limestone dust that was given to her by a neighbour and its detailed marks are influenced by calcified worm casts that Deirdre had found on stones in Norfolk some years earlier. Untitled 6 was sold to Shannon Development, a former semi-state agency, in 1997. Deirdre discovered in 2016 that the painting had been put up for auction and sold soon after the agency was dissolved and her art collection disassembled. While participating in Askeaton Contemporary Arts Annual Residency Programme, in 2015, Deirdre displayed her research about Shannon Development Agency in an unused retail space in Askeaton. When I went to do the residency in Askeaton, oh, I was really interested in the traces of Shannon Development Enterprises in Askeaton. Um, and, and I made, you know, I, I, I made a a film and in the, the, the traces of all these grand visions, these kind of utopian visions for making something of the West. Justin Keating claimed that in the sensible economic geography for Ireland, there needed to be countervailing forces of roughly similar size, each big enough to support culture and third level education with efficient transport and communications. This is the sort of economic geography that will guarantee us growth, but it would guarantee us a civilised environment as well. And I think you should be planning to be a countervailing force on that scale. I think your fundamentals are that good that you can think in that perspective. Keating's vision... The thing that, that uh, was characteristic of, of Shannon development, like so much in Ireland is was the tension between um, bottom up and top down enterprises. In other words, state interference, state control, or um, locally dispersed um, uh, power. And the two, you know, it, the, the visions that were had for Shannon Development as a company were really ex quite inspiring. I mean, I just listened back to the film. And, and there's one quote from Justin Keating that I read, where he talks about um, a vision for a kind of counter point to Dublin that had the, that, that was desired that had the kind of resources, the cultural, the educational. So, cause you think Shannon development, I think was instrumental in starting NIHE in Limerick, which became the University of Limerick. So, so setting up a kind of counterpoint for Dublin to Dublin to which, which he felt 
was a better vision for the country. And I think the collection in a sense and its dispersal mirrors the, 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 the kind of dynamics of Shannon development itself and how those um, utopian desires for a West of Ireland that had an economic and cultural, that had a rich future ahead of it, could be best achieved. And then the sale of the painting is this kind of sad full stop at the end of the story. So maybe the publication offers a small glimmer of um, understanding 